Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and welcome to the seventh video in our free Greenland paddle building series, where we're gonna be talking about the paddle layout process and cutting out the shape of the blade. Now, remember, this is a series, so if you haven't done this already, make sure that you go back and at least watch the introduction video. I'll throw a link up on the screen for that right now, and you can find the entire playlist with all these videos in order here on the channel. You can also find this entire series for free without any commercials on my website, and then, as always, if you want to support the free content that we put out here, think about picking up a set of our paddle plans, checking out our skin on frame boat building courses, buying your next piece of paddling gear from us, or just making a donation. You can find all that stuff on our website, and there are links in the video description below. And of course, if you have any thoughts or any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. All right, enjoy the video. So starting the layout process here, the first thing you wanna do is cut your paddle blank to size. And like I said in the sizing video, I'm not giving specific sizing information in my videos anymore. Just because if I change my mind about something, that means I have to come back and refilm the entire video. So if you're looking for my latest sizing recommendations, you're gonna find those in the Greenland paddle plants on our website. But I will tell you the size of the paddle that I'm building right now. This is a paddle for me, and this blank is 87 inches long, our starting width is three and three eighths inches, and our starting thickness is one and seven sixteenths inches. Now, that one and seven sixteenths dimension is a little bit thinner than the height of a normal two by four, so if you need to thin this down, you can run it through a stationary planer, or if you don't have one of those, you could thin it down with your handheld power planer, or if you know how to do it safely, you can even thin this down vertically on a table saw by taking two passes. Now, before we get started, I just wanna remind you that when you're cutting your paddle blank to length, it's always a good idea to come a little bit in from the end and cut it off because especially with Western red cedar, oftentimes there's hidden fractures in the ends of your paddle blanks. So if you just pull your tape measure from one end of the board to the length of your paddle and cut it off, the opposite end of the board might actually have some hidden stress fractures, which can start to open up towards the end of the paddle building process. So if you have the length to spare, I would suggest coming a couple inches in from the ends on a red cedar paddle blank, of course, leaving enough for the length of your paddle. And if you're building out of spruce or something like that, usually you can get away with just coming in about an inch. Now, if you see any visible cracks, you wanna come to the end of the visible crack that you can see, and then you're gonna come two inches for red cedar or one inch for spruce, and then cut it off at that location. Now, if that's gonna leave your paddle blank a little bit too short, you can always pry the crack open and use a piece of paper to slide some glue into there, clamp it shut overnight, and that's another way to solve that problem. So first thing we're gonna do is mark the midpoint along the length of the paddle. This paddle blank is 87 inches long, so I'm gonna mark this at 43 and a half inches. And you always wanna double check this measurement by measuring from the opposite end as well. And then next thing you wanna do is measure out from the center line mark here, half the width of the length of the loom and make a mark. So for example, the loom on this paddle is gonna be 20 and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna mark 10 and a quarter inches to either side of the center line here. And then you're gonna square this across with your combination square here and here. So now that we've marked the length of the loom, next we're gonna mark out the width, but I just wanna remind you of what I said in the tool video, that we are intentionally using a Sharpie for all of these marks, because it gives us a nice dark line that's a lot easier to follow with a jigsaw or a bandsaw. And also, because a Sharpie line has thickness, it means I can have you cut to the outside of the line and then slowly work your way in to get to the finished shaping. So I would highly encourage you to take my advice and use a Sharpie for your layout. So next thing we're gonna do is lay out the width. And the way that I like to do that is to get my combination square and pull this in. And the amount that you're gonna set this just depends on your hand size and also the width of your paddle blank. So make sure you check out the paddle plants for that. For this particular paddle, I'm gonna mark out an inch and a quarter wide loom. And I usually just do this by trial and error. So I'm gonna take my combination square like this I'm gonna make a mark, put it on the other side, and make a mark. And then I want the distance from the center of this dot to the center of this dot to be the width of my loom. So 
Looks like I landed right on the money there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark this out. But usually you have to fuss with this a little bit to get it right. So once you've done that, you just wanna clamp your paddle blank down to your workbench, grab your combination square like this, put it against the piece of wood, put your Sharpie against the combination square, and then you're just gonna pull this all the way down the paddle blank to the other end of the loom. And then you're gonna come back the other direction like this. Make sure you stop at the edge of the loom right here. And once again, the loom measurement is from the center of this line to the center of this line right here. And next thing we're gonna do is mark out the shoulders where there's gonna be a little bit of a step right here. And you can do this with a tape measure, but I find it's easier just to grab a scrap of wood that's a quarter inch thick and lay it on the outside of the line and then mark to the outside of that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I've got a full quarter inch of space between these lines right here. It's not from the center of the line to the center of the line. In this case, it's a quarter of an inch between the lines. Next, you're gonna grab your straight edge and you're gonna line up one end with this mark that we just made for the shoulder. Make sure you can still see the line. And then coming out to the end of the paddle blank, you're gonna line up that same edge with the outside edge of the paddle blank. And it's not a bad idea just to set a clamp here right now, just so this doesn't slide on you. Double check, make sure it's still on the line in the back. And now you can take your Sharpie and connect these two points. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So this is what this looks like all the way at the end of the paddle. And I want you to notice that because the straight edge came all the way out to the edge right here, you don't actually see a black line over the last inch and a half or so. And this is what this should look like down at the root of the blade. We've got the loom, we've got the shoulder, and then everything from here out is gonna get carved into the blade. And you're gonna make these marks on both ends of the paddle blank, but only on one face. So next we're gonna cut the outline of the paddle with a bandsaw or a jigsaw. But if you don't have a lot of woodworking experience, or even if you do, it's never a bad idea to get yourself a scrap of construction lumber and lay out the root of the blade section because there's some tricky cuts in here and this will give you a good chance to practice these cuts and also to make sure that your cutting tools are working like they're supposed to. All right, so the first tool I wanna to talk about here is a jigsaw. And to be clear, this is not my first choice for making these cuts because even a really high quality jigsaw is never gonna cut as clean or as straight as a bandsaw. But if you don't have access to a bandsaw, you can get this done with a jigsaw, but you have to make sure that it's a fairly high quality jigsaw. A cheap Harbor Freight or Home Depot jigsaw is probably not gonna get this done. Ideally, you're looking for something with a cord you wanna make sure that you have something that has a blade advancement adjustment, and that's this thing on the side right here. And what this does is it pushes the blade forward with every cut, and it makes it a lot easier to make these cuts. Also, you wanna load this thing with a medium aggressive blade. This one is a blade that's actually made for hardwood. The reason I don't like the super aggressive blades that are made for softwood is just because they tend to be a lot more flexy and they don't tend to cut as straight. So, and then last thing here, if you're shopping for a new jigsaw, I would highly recommend a barrel grip over a trigger grip because the problem with a trigger grip is it places your hand so much farther from the cut, but also your forearm is clenched while you're making that cut, which means that you don't have nearly as good a control. So you're always gonna be able to control a barrel grip jigsaw a lot better than a trigger grip jigsaw. So this jigsaw right here is pretty old. It's about 20 years old. It's a Bosch barrel grip. They do have a newer version of this. This is what I'm gonna be using right now. And then after I make this cut, we're gonna take a look at the results. So the way I want you to cut this, whether you're using a bandsaw or a jigsaw, is you're gonna cut along the outside of the line. You don't wanna cut any wider than the outside of the line, but you do wanna follow the outside of the line. And then when you get to the loom section right here, if you were using a bandsaw, I would tell you to actually come down onto this line right here and cut a little bit of it off. But if you're using a jigsaw, you wanna stay on the outside of this line as well, because once again, jigsaws do not cut as straight as bandsaws and you don't wanna make your paddle too thin.
Now, something really important you need to know about cutting with jigsaws is that it's really easy to accidentally make a dramatically angled cut, even if it looks like it's cutting straight. And so the thing to keep in mind is that when you're making this cut, if you notice you're drifting off your line, you never want to apply pressure sideways on the jigsaw. What you want to do is turn the base of the jigsaw so it's loose in your hand and it's following the line. And this can be a little weird because depending on the torque of the jigsaw, the jigsaw might actually be angled to the line but be following the line straight. And that's generally going to give you better results. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this cut. Now, pausing again for a second, once you get to the shoulder, you're gonna keep cutting and you're gonna slowly cut over to the line on the loom and keep going. So you're gonna make a little bit of an S turn right here. You don't want it to take forever to get on this line, but you also don't wanna to make too dramatic of a turn. So. Now, taking a look at the squareness of this cut, you can see that at least right here, this is perfectly square, which is really good results for a jigsaw. But if I pull it back a little bit, notice how there's a little bit of a gap down here. So if you put your combination square on here and you see a gap down at the bottom or up at the top that's any bigger than a sixteenth of an inch, you're going to need to adjust your tool, modify your cutting technique, or get a different tool altogether. Now, the next tool you can do this with is a bandsaw. And generally speaking, a bandsaw is gonna be more accurate than a jigsaw, but not always. And so I would recommend that the minimum horsepower bandsaw that you try to do this with is three quarter horsepower, and you wanna have a brand new four tooth half inch wide blade on it. And when you're cutting this, it's the same process. We're gonna be cutting to the outside of the line until you get to the root of the blade, and then you're gonna drift over onto the loom and then you're gonna cut either exactly on the outside of this line, or if you trust yourself and you have good cutting technique, you can cut a little bit into this line, and that's just gonna minimize the amount of work you have to do later when you're cleaning up the loom. Now, as far as cutting technique, the most common problem that I see with people who don't have a lot of bandsaw experience is overcorrecting. So they'll start to cut into their line a little bit, and then they get nervous and turn the piece of wood too much, and then they cut way out of their line, and then they turn it back too much, and they cut into their line, and you end up making a really wobbly cut. It's almost like overcorrecting when you're driving a car in the snow. Now, when you get down onto the loom here, it is very important to try to cut this as straight as possible. And something that's really helpful with that is just to put a couple fingers on the outside of the wood while you're making the cut to act as a fence and a guide. Now, you never wanna set your actual fence because Unless you have a professional grade, super expensive bandsaw, I guarantee that this is gonna to start to drift off this line. Now, when you get to the end of the cut along the loom here, you're gonna to wanna to cut all the way up to the shoulder, and then you're gonna to wanna to back out, and then you're gonna to wanna to cut up and out like this. You don't wanna to try to cut up onto this shoulder right here, because that's gonna leave way too much paddle hanging out the other end of the bandsaw, and it's gonna be really hard to control. And then you can turn the paddle around and you can come from the other direction right here. And then as long as you're cutting from this opposite direction, you just wanna keep going down to the other end, and then you're gonna finish this cut right here. All right, so taking a look at the finished paddle blank, once again on the blades, you're gonna to try to cut exactly to the outside of this black line. And that's especially important when you get down to the shoulder. You wanna make sure that when you're making this transition, you're cutting all the way on the outside of that black line so you don't accidentally cut into the height of your shoulder. And then from there, we're gonna drift down onto this line for the loom. And if you're using a jigsaw or you have difficulty cutting straight with a bandsaw, I would recommend leaving the entire black line on this cut as well. But if you've got good bandsaw technique and you can cut nice and straight, it is acceptable to cut a little bit into this line. You can see I've left about half the thickness right here. And then pay attention to this next part because this is extremely important. When you're finishing off these cuts at either end of the loom, it is very important that you don't accidentally drift inwards like this with your blade because this area right here at the root of the blade is the highest stress point on the entire paddle. And if you were to finish off these bandsaw cuts and cut in a little bit, you're gonna create a weak spot there, which is gonna make your paddle likely to break. So just make sure that when you're following these lines at either end of the loom, 
you're just cutting nice and straight along that line and you don't let your saw come inward at all. And then finally, when you're done cutting out the shape, don't forget to flip the blank around and finish off the cuts on the other end of the loom.